But we still don't have a Eddie and Sven. But you can see everybody dying here in this family just in unlucky situation. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Pinch control. Gregory. Wait, how can I? Oh, okay. Where's the Gregory? Here. But we don't have an Eddie. Teamwork, respect, strength. So he was in the army. Or actually it was a kid of a Sam. Gregory. Sam Finch, divorce contract. K was a wife. They divorced. A why? Dear K, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. That time's over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Damn it. 
Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. I wish you could have. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. So this is the reason of a divorce. The baby died. No, here is a goose. My mom ever writing poetry, and yet we still don't have Eddie. Right. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. So, a religious one. I can't imagine what it was like for her to lose two sons after she'd already lost two brothers. Sanjay, Sanjay, and Dawn. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Where helping hands create safe places. India. Fly to India. June 1987. 10 ways to teach critical thinking. Nothing more here, right? Oh, there is a window. Wait, first I want to check the story of a... Uh, what was his name? Go Goose? Or Gus or something like that? And I'm not sure, and maybe in uh, Eddie's room. Eddie's room was something. I check everything. Rice flux, 7.30 a.m. Breakfast, 8 a.m. Quiet time, 11 p.m. Duties, dawn, sweep, trash, gas, mop, mow yard, Greg, be a baby. A routine, jump rope, 100 times. Jumping jacks, 150. Push-ups, 100 times. Crunches, 100 times. Run to... Mailbox and back and back. One hundred fifty jumping jacks. You kidding me? It's just a jumping, or it's like making a push up and jump, push up and jump. Not sure. A poem for Gus who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard.
Oh, like this, okay. My father made them come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. The storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I remember. Husband and wife. Make it cry. Wait, what? I don't see any text anymore. Where is the stepmother? Oh, here is something. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. Okay, badass. The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. Oh my god, again. Wrong decision. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. So again, so again, it's bad decision. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Girl, don't forget you're pregnant. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. So, which one is this? Here. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. Milton. Louis. Time sage. Okay, so he was into. Uh, into herbs. And gardening, maybe. Very spot mix. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Never stop learning. Assume nothing. Analyze objectively. Respect criticism. Assume nothing. Ask thought questions. Awesome. Great job. Reading is a hoot. I had some animal too. It was his room? On the tree? I 
حديد The curse again history myth to teach and to learn seven ways to create a fulfilling classroom down finch so wanted to be a teacher or maybe he was our family is a fact or fiction Relief, a force, and in disaster. Scientific method, observation, question, research, hypothesis. This is probably experiment, data, conclusion. Classification of living things. A taxonomist is a biologist who specialized in what's that? Olasi. I have no chance to read it. Olasi P. I have no idea. Oh, it's C. Classy. P. I don't know. Plant, animal, fungus, protist, moneran, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genius, species, variety. The beginning of the end was Milton's tenth birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Milton, his castle. Oh, that's why he had the crown on the head on the photo. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. So I was right, he was a king. Wait, first I want to check. He, uh, Okay, nothing here. King in the castle, king in the castle. to finally have another painter in the family. It looks like he was more like a architect. And it was his imagination of a school. Actually, it looks cool. This school looks cool. Story 1992. Milton is the one who vanished, right? Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. A two. Disappeared. Oh, that's all. 
You just paint the doors on the wall and just went inside. And nobody seen him after that. So we still don't know what exactly happened. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Here are the doors. They can't do anything with that. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. So we don't know what happened. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Looks like he was into the herbs too. Lewis's room smelled very, oh. very familiar. That part of him lived on. But inside. <clears throat> Oh, video games. Wonder and Turbo. Looks like a Sega. High school and diploma. Marijuana. India. Doors, quality cigars. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Oh, see these. The Red King's Dream. Conspiracy now. Okay, he had a nice keyboard, two monitors, computer, so what happened? Don Finch. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Oh, so... He kept working at the cannery. He was addicted. But he withdrew part of himself. <clears throat> In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. Oh yeah, that can. He was working here. His mind began to... what? What can I do? Wonder. Oh. I asked him to describe it. I'm playing two games small. at once. Imagining a labyrinth. Wait. It's hard to do th he two things at the same time. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Toads. 
look like a dragon. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. The dog? On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. <laughs> and songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. Oh, they can't go up with me. He held an election for mayor. And he won. I was like in Super Mario. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. Everything with his name. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery even as his mother pleaded with him part of Lewis kept sailing on in Lewisburg he heard rumors of a Handsome queen, beautiful prince. Handsome queen.
the queen was on her own quest for. Sinister serpents. Let's go there. Sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her. Electric sitar. Electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Where's the fish? He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, too many fishes. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Where is the fish? For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Okay, it looks like a blood, a lot of blood. So what happened? Oh, there's a key. I Began can interact. The world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder, The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. This cat, Molly. Hello, hello everyone. His queen waited, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do.
and the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. You're kidding me. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. And it was because he was smoking marijuana. Like, I know that if you have some predisposition for some mental illness, drugs can help to start it. But there's a problem, you never know if you have predisposition or not. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. So like the only story what we don't have is uh, Eddie. Open the door. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Happy 19th birthday. Disaster relief, Sanjay Kumar. To teach and to learn, don't finch. Oh God, you have called your servants to Ventures. Why it's so like not blurry but better resolution. <clears throat> what happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. This is my room. A bird made from paper, like origami. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. And we missed somehow the story of Eddie. Fuck. Is this the last one? It's our story? day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Well, she wanted to stay again. She was the one who didn't leave during the... What was the problem? The weather? She was the only one who didn't the leave the island. Edie always had plenty of candles. Oh, music box isn't here anymore. When my mom said the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Never look inside? No. Or that Edie had a key to it. So we didn't miss her story. We will see now. Thing 
you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories! I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? History of the Finches by Eddie Finch Odin The Field of People Okay, what, what happened? Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. Nope. Oh my god. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith! What are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car and... I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. Oh, I was doing this too. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. No. And then I was alone. The 
the last finch left alive. Not the last, uh, Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. I'm going to be born, like. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now... Things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. So she died too. Story by Jan Sparrow or Shirley Dallas, nineteen forty eight, two thousand thirteen. 